Have a look at this new rear mini display for your Tesla Model 3 or your Tesla Model Y. The passengers in the back now have the ability to turn on their heated seats in addition to controlling their climate. We can also control the music being played in the car and also input your own media through Bluetooth and Apple CarPlay. This 8-inch screen runs on an Android platform with the ability to add multiple apps to the Google Play Store. My name is Evan and if you're new here, welcome. I create Tesla content educating anyone wanting to know more about their vehicles and also showcase the many Tesla accessories on the market like this one here. Consider subscribing to my channel to see future content like this. There's a link below this video should you be interested in getting this for yourself. I'm going to show you how to install this on my Tesla Model 3. It follows a very similar process for the Tesla Model Y. Now I know this product may not be for everyone, but I like to showcase all kinds of accessories that may fit your lifestyle. I understand that most people may not use the entertainment portion of this new accessory. However, I think the main selling point of this is to control your heated seats while also adjusting the temperature and fan speed in the back without having to ask the driver. The added entertainment is a perk with the ability to customize it the way you like, as this is pretty much an Android tablet but it's hardwired into your Tesla. If you have children, this might be a nice upgrade for you. You could add Bluetooth game controllers to keep the little ones occupied in the long road trips. Also, if you need help installing most products sold by Handshow, you can leave a comment below and I'd be happy to help you. I've taken apart and put together many parts of my Model 3 as you may have seen in my channel. I'm in the Savannah, Georgia area if you happen to live nearby. So to start off the installation of this rear mini display, I want to first point out this does come with two types of USB covers, one for USB-C and the other one with the traditional USB-A ports. I already swapped out mine to the USB-A as I do have the older Model 3. All new Teslas will have the USB-C ports. You can see each screw I had to take out to release release this gray plastic tray. It's not too difficult at all to swap out the trays. Next we first have to pull out the rear AC control box. It comes off fairly easily by gently pulling from the top and bottom of both ends. You'll hear some clips snap free, then disconnect the USB wire by pinching on the cord and pulling it free. Next we have to unscrew these Torque 15 screws on the vent channel. Pop off the vent channel by pushing these tabs on both ends. I found it best to pull on one side and then push on the clips on the other side while pulling the vent towards me. It may seem like you're gonna break it, it should come out though with some good force. Put this vent to the side and now we have to take out these two screws that release the USB control panel. Once these are all out, slide out the USB panel like so and now slide in the new vent panel with the mini display. Take the same screws and place them back into the appropriate holes. Once you have that installed, take the AC vent we removed earlier and clip it back into place on the new frame. Just line up the pattern of this vent clip and you'll hear it clip back into place. Rescrew these two Torque 15 screws and be sure to not to over tighten them. Now that we got the screen and vent all assembled, I'm going to show you how to connect this to your Tesla. The cord that comes with the kit will work with both Intel and AMD Teslas. Again, that's both Intel and AMD Teslas. You can see there are two options already built into the cord. Choose the correct end based on the type of Tesla you have. This black box was already connected to the cord when I got it. We now have to remove the upper panel of the passenger side just below the glove box. Take a pry tool, remove the four plastic pins, and depending on your model year, there may be a torque screw to remove also. Pull down the tray and then unclip the light and speak wires and set this to the side. If you're finding this video helpful so far, consider clicking that like button for me below so current and future Tesla owners can find this. I would greatly appreciate it. Now one of the hardest parts of the install is going under the glove box area and unplugging this wire as you see right here. I have a 2018 Model 3 and your color wire clip may be different from the light gray color. Just note that it's the middle connector that needs to be detached which has this thicker red, black, and green wires. Unclip the wire connector from the car and once disconnected your screen will turn off. Do not be alarmed this is completely normal. Now take the included cord from the kit and go back under the glove box area. Take the plug from the Tesla and attach it into the female end and then attach the remaining connector into the Tesla. This will be the hardest part of the install. I had a hard time clipping in this adapter. Hopefully it won't be as challenging for you. It took my car about 3 minutes for my main screen to turn back on. If it does not, please ensure your connectors are properly attached. Before I started hiding the cord to this mini display in the rear, I wanted to first plug it in to ensure it worked. The connections are pretty straightforward by first plugging in the USB cord in the bottom and then taking our new cord and plugging it into the mini display like so. Once you have it plugged in, you'll see an Android logo when powering on. I went ahead and tried the basic settings of powering on the AC and activating the heated seats. Once we know it's working, we can place the screen facing down and pull down this black panel by pulling on the clips I'm pointing to right here. 
feed the cord down the right side of the center console and also pull free this bottom plastic panel to further hide the wire. Reinstall the bottom panel when finished along with the upper portion of the center console cover. Now we can take our screen and install it on top. Ensure the cord is not behind the air vent and I wrapped it around the side and pushed it further down in the center console. Align all the clips and push firmly on the vent and not the screen. You will hear all the pieces clip into places that will lock into the console. Next remove this center console fabric and hide the cord behind it as we have to run the cord toward the glove box area. Reattach the panel as you hear it clip back into place. Finally tuck all the remaining cord under the glove box near the right side. You can also use a zip tie for this for a neater organization. Finally reattach your passenger side footwall panel by clipping in the light and speaker wires into the appropriate holes and placing the black plastic buttons back into the panel. And that's it, we just installed the new mini display for the passengers. So a couple things I noticed when the fans or AC is off on the main unit. You can't turn it on back here, so the AC must be running or heat must be running in the front in order for this to work. So here we gotta go, make sure this is on, so I'm gonna tap it on. Now you can see it's activated and we can adjust the temperatures down here and it will adjust the fans, turn this down. So adjusting the fan speed back here will also adjust the fan speed up front. What I like about this is now you can activate your heated seats in the rear. So you can tap them all on or one click to close. And one thing I want to point out here is that the screen sits a little bit lower above the vents. So it might, like I can still feel the air coming out, but it slightly blocks it. It's not a huge blockage, but um, I can feel it coming off the top or the bottom rather of the screen part. And notice how I adjust the fans, it goes faster. I can turn it off. So the air stops back here, but it's still blowing up front. I can turn it back on. And it starts to blow air again out of here. What I really like about this screen is that you can adjust the temperature. Say I wanted like a good 76 or 77 back here and 61 on this side. I don't know how it does it, but it's actually cold on the right side. And now it's warmer coming out the left. Okay, here's a movie. I'm assuming you can plug in some type of uh, SD card here in the back. You can see there's multiple slots to plug in whatever USB-C, micro SD card. Headphone jack is also back there. So I'm gonna back out of this, if I can here. Go back to music. Adjust the volume. It's coming directly out of here. And then I can also adjust the music on the main screen from here now. Which is honestly the perfect trick, right? We're, we're not seeing, we, we did, like you said, the and also it has all these Android apps. So in order for this to work, you have to, for example, if you hit YouTube, you have to connect to the network. So, you're going to have to go through all your settings here, network settings, and then now we can connect it to Wi-Fi should you want to use your mobile phone. But it's pretty much just an Android device, customization is pretty good, car, turn on, temperature, brightness. I put to automatic. The main purpose of the screen anyways I think is for obviously for the passengers to turn on their AC 
adjust the fan speed and then the big thing here is the heated seat option um, the rest of the apps I don't see being used too much unless you have kids but I think the kids have iPads back here anyway but if you're really into the Android App Store and the customizations I'm sure you can add more apps from the Google Play Store play some games on here so that's a general tutorial of what we can do on the screen. Honestly, looking at Hanshaw's website, the possibilities are endless. It's an Android tablet with lots of customizations. Also, regarding the climate controls in the back, unless it's just me, I had no idea these rear vents would create two separate climate zones. I know the front seats, you can obviously choose two different temperatures simultaneously, but in the back seats, I really had no idea. That should tell you I never sit in the back of my car. Anyways, if you have any further questions about this install, just let me know in the comments below. To see even more accessories from all my videos, on this channel be sure to check out my new website at evanmichaels.com to find everything all in one page if you've enjoyed this video as much as i did creating it consider dropping a like for me down below and subscribe to see future content like this again my name is evan and i'll see you in the next one